Hello health enthusiasts. Today, we're tackling a controversial topic, red meat. Our purpose, to dispel the fog of misinformation and reveal the truth behind common misconceptions. From claims about cancer and heart disease to concerns about antibiotics and hormones, we'll delve into the science, separating fact from fiction. Because when it comes to our health, it's vital to make informed decisions based on solid evidence, not hearsay. So, are you ready to debunk some myths about red meat? Let's dive in. Myth number one, red meat causes cancer. Let's examine the facts. There's been a lot of chatter about this topic and it's time we cleared the air. Various studies have been conducted on the link between red meat and cancer, and the results are mixed. Some suggest a possible correlation, while others find no significant connection at all. The World Health Organization classifies processed meat as a group 1 carcinogen, which means it could potentially cause cancer. However, it's crucial to understand that this doesn't mean eating processed meat will definitely give you cancer. It simply means that there's enough evidence to suggest a possible link. As for red meat, it's classified in group 2A, which means it's probably carcinogenic. But again, this doesn't translate to red meat equals cancer. It means there's evidence, but it's not conclusive. The bottom line? There's no definitive proof that red meat directly causes cancer. It's more about how you balance your diet and moderation in consumption. So the verdict? Red meat does not directly cause cancer. It's all about moderation and a balanced diet. Moving on to the second myth, red meat causes heart disease. The belief that red meat contributes to heart disease is quite widespread. However, recent scientific studies have shown that there isn't a direct link between the consumption of red meat and the development of heart disease. The key lies in the type of red meat consumed and how it's prepared. Lean cuts of red meat, like sirloin or tenderloin, are lower in saturated fats and can be part of a heart-healthy diet. The method of preparation also matters. Grilling, broiling, or roasting red meat instead of frying or breading can reduce unhealthy fats. Moreover, consuming red meat in moderation as part of a balanced diet, rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat dairy, is a healthier approach. So red meat does not directly cause heart disease, especially when consumed as part of a balanced diet. Myth number three, red meat causes diabetes. Now, that's a claim that's been floating around for quite some time, but let's take a closer look at the facts. It's important to note that there is no concrete scientific evidence that directly links red meat consumption to the development of diabetes. Yes, some studies suggest a correlation, but correlation does not imply causation. What's more significant in the development of diabetes are lifestyle factors. A sedentary lifestyle, poor diet, obesity, and a lack of physical activity are all major contributors to the onset of this condition. It's not about singling out one food group like red meat but about the bigger picture of overall lifestyle choices. In conclusion, while it's crucial to maintain a balanced diet, it's overly simplistic and misleading to pin the cause of diabetes on red meat alone. So, does red meat cause diabetes? The current scientific evidence says no. On to the fourth myth, red meat causes inflammation. It's a claim that's been floating around for quite some time now, but what does the science say? Well, it tells a different story. Contradicting popular belief, several studies have shown no direct link between the consumption of red meat and inflammation. In fact, inflammation is more likely to be the result of overeating in general rather than the specific consumption of red meat. When we consume more calories than our bodies can use, it can lead to an excess of energy, which our bodies often respond to by triggering inflammation. This can happen whether you're overindulging in red meat, sweets, or even fruits and vegetables. So it's not red meat that's the villain here, but overconsumption. Remember, moderation is key in any diet. The key takeaway here, overindulgence, not red meat, is the real culprit behind inflammation. So, the claim that red meat causes inflammation, not backed by science. Myth number five, red meat is full of antibiotics and hormones. This is a common belief that has spread far and wide. However, it's not exactly the whole truth. Let's unpack this. Yes, some farmers do use antibiotics and hormones in their livestock. Antibiotics are used to prevent disease, and hormones can help animals grow faster. But here's the key. These practices are heavily regulated in many parts of the world. 
In the United States, for instance, the Food and Drug Administration has stringent rules about antibiotic use in livestock. They prohibit the use of hormones in poultry and pigs, and while hormones can be used in cattle and sheep, it's under strict controls. Similarly, in the European Union, the use of hormones in meat production is completely banned. As for antibiotics, they can only be used under veterinary supervision. So, is all red meat full of antibiotics and hormones? Not necessarily. It largely depends on where and how the meat was produced. It's always best to know the source of your food. So there you have it, folks. We've debunked some major myths about red meat, from it causing cancer to it being loaded with antibiotics and hormones. It's crucial to understand that no single food group should be demonized. Red meat, like any other food, has its place in a balanced diet. It's all about moderation. Remember, the key to a healthy diet is balance and moderation. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more health myth-busting content.